This is my extended research topic on fiber optics. So we're gonna start with the history of fiber optics. So fiber optics is based on the theory that light can be guided using refraction. Refraction being what I, my main research topic was at the, on the first uh, presentation I created. The first recorded instance of someone attempting this theory was by Daniel Colladin and Jacques Babinet in 1842. However, rather, using, uh, rather than using glass, they used water flowing in a stream from a barrel and they shone a light through, uh, through the barrel that was perpendicular to the hole the water would flow through. Now, through this experiment, they, uh, they demonstrated that light would bounce within the stream of water and illuminate the water that was flowing into a bucket. Uh, so pretty much it was showing the stream of water being illuminated and then the light would also go into the bucket below. And they called this their light fountain. And their light fountain was considered to be the first instance of total internal reflection and a precursor to the current fiber optic systems that are used today. This is an example of a light fountain, although not the exact one that they use. Now, in order of understanding this image, you have to note that the light travels in a wave-like formation throughout the fluid, and this is total internal reflection at work. And as you can see here by my cursor, you can see the light coming through here, bouncing at the uh, medium, or the, the barrier between the medium of air and the water, and then bouncing back and bouncing forward. Now, as we continue, these are some terms to understand. We have the core, which is highlighted here. It's this very small little straw. And uh, this is the inner area where the light propagates through, where it is also essentially a straw that the light travels through. And it is very small, and we will go into the core later. We also have the cladding, which is the area surrounding the core. It is uh, comprised of a material that has a lower index of refraction than the core. An index of refraction is something we went through in my first presentation and is essentially a larger straw that surrounds the core. So a straw within a straw, if that makes any more sense. And finally, we have RATS, or R-A-T-S, which is uh, something that we use daily in our photoscience classes, which stands for reflection or refraction, depending on what you're doing at the time, absorption, transmission, and scattering. And we have some slight examples over here describing each one. And we have total internal reflection, which we touched on earlier. It's a, an optical phenomenon, and it occurs when light hits a surface at a specific angle, which allows it to reflect in the material that the light is already in. So if it hits the medium at a specific angle, usually in refraction, it would come out into the other medium at a different angle. However, the angle it hits in this instance will have it bounce back into the material. And finally, we have critical angle, and this is the smallest angle at which light can hit a boundary and total internal reflection can occur. However, most of the times in this critical angle, the light will instead travel at the base of the barrier between the two medians. So rather than coming out, it will travel right at the border of the two. Now here are some equations that we need to know. The uh, critical angle formula, which is theta equals arc sine of N2 over N1, N being the index of refraction of a material and theta being the angle of light and Snell's law, which we used before, which is N1 sine one theta equals N2 sine two theta, which we touched on earlier. Now here's a slight example of rats. We have reflection, light that bounces off uh, the material and this is more of a concentrated sense so that you can actually see an image that is coming back at you and uh, one of these examples actually is a window. If you ever look right out a window, you might be able to see your reflection. And that is because 4% of the light that is going towards the window is actually being reflected back at you. We have scattering, which is similar to reflection. However, in the case, however, in this case, the 4% of the light is not going in one direction. It is being scattered in many different areas, therefore called scattering. We have transmission which is the light that travels through the medium, which can also be, uh, which is an example also of refraction, as we saw in my previous uh, slides, where the light would go through the lens at a different angle. However, in our example, we just have it going straight through. And absorption, which is light that is absorbed by the medium. However, in most instances, we don't deal with this. Now, fiber optic components. 
the core is the smallest and most essential part of the system. Uh, most of the time, it is made of a glass from an extremely, and I'm talking extremely pure silicon dioxide, SiO2, or a certain type of classified plastic, which I currently work on at Syntec Optics. I'm not at liberty to say what kind of molding we use. Uh, both materials must be rated to a 99.94% clarity in order to be used in certain military and civil fiber optic systems. Now, this 99.94% clarity sometimes can be deviated, from, uh, be deviated upon whether it be uh, for private use, for corporate use, or even for medical use. Most times in medical uses, they require a higher clarity. Now, the size of these cores vary depending on its use. Cores made from glass can range between 3 to 200 micrometers, which is probably smaller than, this, uh, than a hair. And while cores from plastic can be larger, up to nearly one millimeter. The second component that we use is the cladding. Uh, and this is the coat of the core. And it's comprised of the same material, but with a lower index of refraction in order to have the greater amount of light retained within the core. So rather than coming out of the core, it bounces back in. Now, the cladding sizes vary on the size of the core. Once again, if you have a three micrometer core, you're not going to need a 200 micrometer cladding. You're usually going to have it just slightly larger, but it also depends on if it's a single mode fiber, which is produced of one core, or a multi mode fiber, which consists of more than one. But in cases such as, you know, undersea wires or even civil uses under the ground, such as internet, usually contains thousands of cores. The final component, the basic component that we need to understand is the coating. Now, the coating isn't an actual part of it. It is more of a, well, as it is a coating. It is an efficiency booster and a protective measure for the fiber optic systems. So they run faster and they don't get damaged. Now, depending on the use of the system, it can either be applied to the core or the cladding. Uh, this is also used to reduce the amount of light naturally lost in scattering and absorption and is sometimes used out of silver. Here's a blueprint on how fiber optics work. We have the core in the center, surrounded by the cladding, surrounded by a coating, and in cases of undersea uh, uh, fiber, there's uh, Kevlar fibers that are used to make sure it is uh, secure, and an outer jacket to, prevent, uh, to uh, prevent intrusion from outside forces. Now, just a side note here, uh, the size is obviously not to scale. The coating would most time never take up this, this much space, being almost the same size as the core and the cladding. It is usually a thin coat that is applied to each individual core slash cladding. And here are some examples we have of fiber optics. If you, have, if you just recently bought a, a new TV or a Apple or a, even a, a Apple TV or a uh, Amazon Fire Stick, you probably have seen these. So these are the fiber optic cables used for audio purposes in order to increase or decrease rather um, issues with uh, uh, audio and video so they're better connected or better in sync. Uh, over here we actually have a cross cut of uh, undersea fiber optic cable which were used for intercontinental connections so to connect the United States to, to Asia to Europe and as you can see here there are thousands of the and I'm pretty sure these are just the, the claddings. They're not even the core. The core are these individual specks of light. And each, individual, oops, sorry, and each individual speck of light contains what could be hundreds of individual data transmissions. And over here, we have uh, an Invuity uh, part, which I actually work on. And this is mostly used for medical purposes. This flat area over here uh, transmits the light that is fi uh, op fiber optically connected to an individual wire system that will shine light through here and bend it at an angle in order to get a better illumination uh, what that could be during a surgery or any other non-intrusive or intrusive rather uh, medical uh, operations. Now how does it affect us? We use fiber optics in our lives today and we may never even know it if you, don't, if you are not looking for it. As I said before, that new TV may have a fiber optic port that allows a better sync from video to audio. If you're facing a relative or downloading something off the internet, the servers that are being used to connect you to your loved ones or the content 
could be connected to a, another server farm across the ocean. And this allows us to get these high speed internet downloads to, um, to get your content and to get you better connected as well as to reduce lag. In the world, they, pay a, they play a much bigger role. They are using telecommunication lines so our political leaders can connect to one another and speak upon issues that may be immediately communicated about. And I, I think back to during the Cold War, uh, there was a, a red phone in the White House that would connect the president to the premier of the USSR. And at first they were used uh, exclusively through satellites. However, in more recent times, they're actually used uh, with fiber optic communications. There's a direct, actually multiple direct lines that, can, that connect the United States to, uh, the, to Russia. Now in the medical field, they can be used in specific non-intrusive uses uh, to determine what is wrong with the patient. So they will actually shove a, a, a fiber optic camera as well as fiber optic lights uh, into a person either through the mouth or in another way to uh, determine if there's problems with the lungs, with the stomach, with the colon, with the intestines. Uh, and they use these to determine what is wrong with the patient and to get a clear view of the problem at hand rather than cutting the patient up and possibly hurting them. Scientifically, these fiber optic systems are constantly being approved upon in order to speed up communication and make transmission of critical data more efficient. Now our conclusion. Fiber optics play an important role in our lives, especially today, whether we know it or not. In times of these pandemics and isolation, it keeps us connected. In times of crisis, it keeps, us, uh, it keeps communication quick and clear. And its uses are extremely beneficial to our daily lives and its role is critical to our way of life as we know it right now. Thank you.